He's sick. He's sick as a dog. Yes, he's very sick. That's why he's out. Today, he, he was, I was told he's sick, not eating, he's puking. You want me to go into the whole tire tread as far as what happened today with him? So we can get that speculation done with as far as that he's going to be moved? He sh his pants, he was puking, he was doing everything. So. <laughs> John Tortorella telling it like it is. We always use a clip like that when it's time to set up one of our favorite segments of the week. Airing of grievances. Just because the football season has ended, the grievances continue. Chris, as always, now I don't know how many grievances you're going to have after spending the whole week on the beach, yeah. but maybe you've been back long enough that you got something that's got you lathered up. Yeah, I don't have a ton uh, that that is getting at me right now. You know, it takes a lot to rile me up. I think the first thing is this, and, and I'm going to go with Le'Veon Bell because this is another subject it just annoyed me uh, throughout the weeks, the last few weeks, especially when I go on other radio stations or things throughout the country. Mike Le'Veon Bell for some reason gets lumped in the into the oh he's a pain in the butt type of player himself like Antonio Brown and he's part of the issues there in Pittsburgh Steelers and I think that I just want to stop that narrative because I think that's ridiculous you know we can't get mad at Le'Veon Bell for using a tool in which uh, was completely within his right to do to uh, guarantee himself future guaranteed money and security for his family and even the next generation of his family he, he wasn't being a bad guy he's never been an issue yes I know he smoked weed in a car a few years ago oh my gosh that's the worst thing we've ever seen okay but other yeah, who than among that, us hasn't done well, that raise yeah, your hand right I mean I know you do that on a daily basis hot boxing <laughs> card I'm not but, talking about me <laughs> but regardless <laughs> but regardless I don't like how he gets lumped in that conversation because one I've been around Le'Veon Bell he's about as nice as they come as far as being a good guy and being a nice guy he is loved by his teammates there in Pittsburgh and I just don't want to get him lumped in there with oh, he's a diva, pain-in-the-butt star football player because he's not. He just made an incredibly tough business decision this year, and I just don't like that, along with the franchise tag in general. That's almost why I want to do a double grievance there, but uh, I do think Le'Veon Bell kind of gets a – a bad rap because he's on the Steelers and he held out and he's friends with Antonio Brown and they get lumped together and I just don't think th I, I like that. Well, I'm going to kind of take the baton okay. on this one because I agree with what you're saying and I want to expand on it because the reason Le'Veon Bell ultimately sat out all of 2018 and and held out until right before the start of the 2017 season is because the Steelers never made him the kind of long-term offer that he was comfortable signing. They used the franchise tag to keep him off the market, to keep him from getting the maximum payday. But they didn't want to use that franchise tag as the true starting point for a long-term deal. They didn't want to guarantee money beyond the first year. And this is one of my problems with the Steelers. They have all these rules that are separate and apart from the rules of the CBA that they constantly force upon their players. We will have no negotiations once the season begins. We won't redo your contract if there's more than one year left unless you're a quarterback. And we won't have any guaranteed money beyond the first year of the deal. Well, maybe you should. And maybe if you had, Le'Veon Bell would still be on your team. So don't blame him. When you're going to use the weapons available to you and you're going to add some yeah. of your own artificial rules, don't get pissed off when the player decides, you know what, you're going to treat it like a business, I'm going to treat it like a business. Right. And this gets back to one of the things that drives me crazy. When the owners make shrewd business moves, oh, yes, a titan of industry, congratulations. When a player does it, he's selfish, he's not a team player, he's a no-good piece of crap, right. on and on. And that drives me crazy. When players act like businessmen, they get criticized because, God forbid, a player exercises his prerogative to change teams. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, and to your point, which you know I agree with 100%, I mean, where was the complaints about, you know, Arthur Blank or the owner of the Buffalo Bills? They cut Charles Clay and Robert Alford. They still had years left on their contract. Why didn't they honor their contract? You know, that is a part of, yes, me as a fan, me as an ex-player that I don't understand. Even when I go work out of the gym, I still have people say that, well, all these players don't honor their contract. And I have to tell gentlemen like, hey, but you don't ever say that when it's vice versa, when the team cuts ties with the player. So, yes, that aspect, uh, hang, hang on yeah. a second. I would love to be there 
while you're arguing with some meathead yeah. about players. No, I just, that would be great. Can you take like a GoPro or when something I'm the next the time gym, you go to the gym? Just call me Big Chest Chris Sims, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just couldn't resist. I, this right. image, yes. this image of you going nose to nose with, uh, you know, with Gino from Jersey yeah. is just something that I, I couldn't ignore. No, that's okay. I don't, I don't ever get nose to nose. I'm always open for conversation. I think you know I'm a pretty good guy, but I go through periods of the gym where I don't get much done because people just keep talking to me about football. So that's one of the struggles of my life. Is it your grievance next or is it mine here? I don't know. What was yours? Well, go ahead. Was if you got one, go ahead. And then you kind of went off of it. I didn't know if that was. Go ahead. Go so, ahead. Throw something else on the fire. My other grievance is with you specifically. First of all, you look very handsome in your black shirt today. I really like the look. It's good. It's, it's blue. Like, oh, is it blue? Okay. Either way, yeah. I like you. Would with it dark be better colors. if I buttoned it all the way to the top? Of course it would. You'd be cool. <laughs> but either right. way, uh, my other is is it something that I saw yesterday on the site because I live on pro football talking about as much as you, but I'm on there a lot. No indication of anyone making a move to sign Collar Kaepernick. Give it up, Mike. It's not gonna freaking happen. He's not gonna get signed by anybody in any league at any time. It is over. I'm sorry to say that. I like Colin Kaepernick a lot, and I am all for his cause and what he's fighting for because he's right there. But Man, you look funny with those glasses on. But regardless, yes, give it up on the Colin Kaepernick thing. It's not going to happen. Now, if you had read the whole article, you would have realized that was kind of my point. Okay, good. That, I didn't read the whole article that, this that, time. I'm yeah, sick okay, of reading yeah, it. You, okay? you read that headline I'm and you move on. I'm sick of reading it. My, my <laughs> point is you got Mark Garrigus on CNN. Boy, this is really bad. Oh, you, you look got good, Mark Garrigus on, on CNN <laughs> saying that, you know, again, and he keeps making these bold predictions. I, I hope he never gambles any money on any of his predictions. <laughs> but he made the bold prediction somebody's going to sign him in the next three weeks. I don't think it's going to happen. That was the gist of the story. So uh, th- my, my grievance is now with you. You're going to call me out without reading my story. Well, I've read the story is, so many it times. It is over. Okay, good. Thank you. Finally. So it's over. I'll believe it's over when you start writing, stop writing posts about it, you know, and then I'll know it's over. But for now, you're still on like a every other day post something about Kaepernick type thing. So I just I had to point that out. First of all, it's the off season, and second of all, <laughs> he's kind of in the news right now. He just settled his grievance uh, with the NFL last week, and oh, by the way, Nike's got this new jersey. This this drives me crazy. Yeah, this disconnect between Nike, which is the apparel provider for the NFL, right. they're selling a, a black and white Kaepernick jersey. It's already sold out, and and they are firmly in the pro Kaepernick camp, and the right. NFL is firmly in the anti Kaepernick camp, and it's not going to change. And I, I just, that disconnect, I, I don't understand it, but I just think that's reality, and, and off we go. Yep, so. that's it. Yep. All right, I, got, I think I got one more for Good. you. Good. And, and this, uh, I, I don't, I kind of have a grievance with Browns fans who have been giving me the business for the last three weeks. I was on radio in Cleveland <laughs> yesterday, and, and they, they kind of they set me up for this. They didn't tell me that they were going to come at me right out of the gates with this. But anytime the interview starts with, I have a bone to pick with you, oh, yeah. my first inclination is to just hang up the phone. I think that should be right? everybody should start their conversation like that with you. That would be pretty foolproof. <laughs> I was on WEEI in Boston Super Bowl week, and... We, we were talking about the Seth Wickersham story about the dysfunction in Cleveland. Yeah. And um, my, my take on it is that Baker Mayfield is smart enough to sense if there really is dysfunction in Cleveland. And you know what? Baker Mayfield may be a member of a new breed that decides – I'm going to play out my rookie contract, and you can tag me once, you can tag me twice, you can tag me three times. And I think the CBA, at best, it's an open question whether or not you can ever tag a guy a fourth time. But, you know, for non-quarterbacks, by the time you play that out, you're in your 30s. For quarterbacks, who cares? Hey, I'm 30, 31. I'm still in my prime. I'm just starting my prime. See you later. And Browns fans went nuts on me for pointing out that if Baker Mayfield thinks that it's better for his career long term, if the ownership of the Browns is an impediment to him being as good as he can be, to the team being as good as it can be, what if he decides, I'm never signing a long-term deal? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor my contract. I'm going to be here in Cleveland. And the moment that I can get to the open market, I'm going. And I know that Browns fans still have that raw nerve after LeBron James left twice. But I, I just feel like after we saw Kirk Cousins, Tremaine Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, to a certain extent Antonio Brown, another guy we're going to be talking about in the next segment, 
I think at some point these young guys coming in are going to have that NBA mentality where I'm going to put in my time under this rookie deal and then I'm out of here. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. I, I do think it's a new wave and a new age as far as player information and what they know and, and knowing how to play the, the business game of the NFL a little bit more. And Baker Mayfield, hey, I mean, you know, I think he's one of these rare guys that can get the dysfunction out of an organization to a degree. You know, I, I hope that doesn't happen, the, the thing you're talking Talking about, but you're right. I don't think he's the type of player that if he felt like things were never going to get fixed in Cleveland, he wouldn't be scared to do it. But I also think one of the reasons you wanted to talk about Baker Mayfield as being rookie of the year, right, over Saquon Barkley, which is a very close race, was you felt like he was turning around just the perceived notion of that organization, right, what he's doing. He kind of, you know, got the Hugh Jackson dysfunction out of there. Coaches who are really good coaches around the league want to go to Cleveland because they they know how special of a guy and a leader and a player he is. So uh, it, it is sometimes, you know, once in a every 10 years and type of thing where a guy like this can come into an organization and truly turn it around because of his attitude and his talent and his day-to-day -day charisma. And Baker seems to have that. The question is, how much better would the team be if it didn't have dysfunction at the very top? Yes, and right. that's the thing that I think Baker Mayfield is going to be very astute. He's going to talk to people. He's going to do his research. And before he ever puts his name on his second contract, he's going to want to believe that it truly has turned around top to bottom and clear. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.